What's up, YouTube? My name is Chris, aka The Mortgage Millennial, where you'll find all the information you need when buying a home or investing in real estate. Now, if you're new to my channel or watching my videos for the first time, a little background on myself. I'm a loan originator located in the state of Florida. And if you're unsure what a loan originator is, I'm the person that you'll talk to when you're needing to qualify for a mortgage. And I'm licensed to give financial advice when it comes to real estate. The reason I decided I wanted to make this channel is because I wanted to reach out to more people like myself and teach them uh, the importance of real estate and mortgages and basically simplify the process for they actually experience their first real estate investment because I know a lot of people would like to learn from their mistakes but I don't know if you want to learn from a real estate mistake because that can cost you thousands of dollars so if you find any value in that make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so we can work with YouTube's algorithm and grow this channel to many people like us so in today's video we're gonna discuss how to get a lower interest rate in the house now keep in mind the word low is a subjective word and I purposely didn't give any numbers because that would be impossible because I don't even know any of your information information so how could I possibly tell you what your interest rate might be but anyway interest rate is given by a bank or a lender and is determined by many factors but for now let's just discuss the main two which is market conditions and the risk that you are to the bank now when I say market conditions I'm referring to what's going on today's news if you weren't aware at the time of this video being recorded we're currently in a pandemic sorta of. and because of that it caused major inflation which usually correlates negatively when it comes to mortgage interest rates meaning when one goes up the other is going to go down and vice versa now in the beginning of the year the inflation rate was around 1.4 percent give or take and as of like two months ago it went up to about 5.4 percent so that's a major increase in inflation now because of this we saw the decline in the mortgage rates now as far as risk to the bank i mean exactly that how risky might be might it be for a bank or a lender to lend you money is determined by a few factors that i'll go over later on in the video but for now instead of thinking how you might lower your interest rate you should probably think how you can lower the risk you may be giving a lender or a bank because essentially it's the only factor that you really have control over uh to, in determining and what your interest rate might be and that's what we're going to go over in this video so the first way you can get a lower interest rate that we'll discuss is by increasing your credit remember what i told you it's all about decreasing your risk credit is basically a number that, that everybody has a chance to get and it's going to determine how good you are at paying back money so the higher your credit score the lower the risk you have before you actually run your credit with a lender or a bank just make sure that you talk to a credit specialist or do one of those credit simulations from that app one of those apps or something so you can make the adjustments that you need to make to make sure your credit at the best it can be when you're getting a loan the second way to get a lower interest rate would be by increasing your down payment once again think about the risk if you're borrowing money to pay for something the statistics show that you're at a higher risk of not paying it back based on how much you contribute for example if i had two clients with the same exact credit score same exact house same everything one of the clients put a down payment of five percent and the other client put a down payment of twenty percent nine times out of ten the person that put down twenty percent is going to have the lower interest rate the third way to get a lower interest rate is to shop around your lender most lenders don't like when you do this because they could potentially lose you as a client but hey unless they're going to help you and pay your mortgage it's fair game to at least you know get a second quote somewhere now make sure you do this with a strategy because i've actually had a scenario where one of my clients left me for another lender because they had a lower interest rate and i warned a client to at least get a loan estimate because that's really the only way you're going to be able to get a decent quote but they end up leaving anyway only to find out a month later the lender could not provide that interest rate unless the borrower wanted to pay like fifteen thousand dollars in points now, i'll go over what points are later on in the video but if you're going to shop around for your lender just make sure you get a loan estimate before i discuss the next way to lower your interest rate i'm gonna ask you if you can hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already done so yet like i said before i really would love to grow this channel and keep giving you tips and the only thing i ask in return is for you guys to like and subscribe so the fourth way that i'm going to discuss on how to lower your interest rate is actually by buying down points now points is basically a fee you pay up front to decrease your interest rate and most people when they hear points instantly they become defensive because they heard someone else mention uh, to never buy points but like I discussed in all of my videos buying a home is not a one-size-fits-all approach and just because it doesn't work for one person does not mean it's not gonna work for the next person best way you can actually determine uh, whether or not to buy points is by answering these two questions how long do you plan on living in a home and what year will you break even and if you want to know how to calculate when you're going to break even you're 
you're going to divide the fee it is to actually buy down the points by the difference between a monthly payment and your interest rate with points and then without points. That's going to give you how many months it's going to take you to break even. But then when you divide that by 12, it's going to give you how many years it's going to take you to actually break even. Now, I know it's a math equation, but it's pretty much simple math. It's going to determine whether or not it makes sense for you to buy points. Because if you break even before you actually move out and you actually save money on interest, this could be very beneficial. So go ahead and leave a comment on what you guys think on what type of video I should do next. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.